This is another video not associated with the problem set just for some extra practice or as extra examples however you want to look at this. So in terms of electrons in the atom we've got quantum numbers which can describe where those electrons are. Those quantum numbers appear in the quantum wave function psi. If we perform the Hamiltonian operator on that psi, then we get the energy times the wave function back out. We can also do psi squared in order to see the probability of where electrons will be. Psi squared for probability, s orbitals have spherical shapes, p orbitals have dumbbell types of shapes along each of the three axes. D orbitals are a little bit more involved. That's what one of them looks like. The others all have four lobes arranged in a variety of ways. We're not going to worry about how those appear. So we've got all of these orbitals. All these orbitals are described and the energies are described by the quantum numbers n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. We can see the effect of these quantum numbers when we do something like an orbital diagram. And so if we want to look at iron, the atom iron, if you want to pause the video now to try to draw an orbital diagram for iron, then please do so. In the orbital diagram for iron, the 1s is full, the 2s is full, the 2p are all full, the 3s is full, the 3p is full, and I know this is shifted, but the 4s is also full. Then for iron itself, the last electrons in iron will be in the 3d orbitals. When you count over for iron, you see iron is at atomic number 26. The 3d orbitals start with atomic number 21. So iron has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. Those go into this orbital as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 6 pairs up with the first one in the beginning. We can see all of the quantum numbers at play here. If we want to look at that last electron, that last electron is in the third shell. It's in a d orbital, so the l is equal to 2. It's in the first of those blanks, and so we would actually say that that's negative 2 for the m sub l. So this would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, if we were trying to assign values to those. And it's also pointing down, so it's going to have spin of negative 1 half. Those would be the quantum numbers for the last electron that fills into the iron atom. What's the electron configuration for the iron atom? The electron configuration for the iron atom would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. How many valence electrons are in the iron atom? The valence shell in the iron atom is the shell with the highest shell number, which is the fourth shell. There are only two electrons in that fourth shell, so there are only two valence electrons for the iron atom. If iron turns into an ion, and iron's a metal, metals tend to lose electrons when forming ions.
Anything that loses electrons is doing so to try to have a full valence shell, a full outside shell of electrons with eight electrons in the s and the p orbitals. So how many valence electrons can iron lose? Two. What would the charge be on an iron ion? Two plus. So iron two plus would have an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d6. What would the orbital diagram look like? Well, I'm only going to draw the third shell. So we would have 3s, 3p, and 3d. It would look the same as before, minus those two 4s electrons. Finally, what would be the noble gas configuration for both iron and iron 2 plus? When you look at iron, iron has an atomic number of 26. The noble gas that is lower than an atomic number of 26 is argon with an atomic number of 18. Argon is also equivalent to 3s2, 3p6. So everything that comes after that is in the electron or in the noble gas configuration for iron. 4s2, 3d6 for the metal. And simply 3d6 for the ion. How about something a little more challenging? Let's do uranium. Uranium has 92 electrons. Uranium, let's start backwards and work from there. Uranium, what would the noble gas configuration be for uranium? Go ahead and pause if you want to try this on your own. Uranium has an atomic number of 92. The noble gas that comes just before uranium is radon with an atomic number of 86. So we need to account for six more electrons here for uranium. If we look at uranium, after the radon, we would have 7s filling with 2. And then if we go straight to the F block, which is what I'm going to ask you to do, then you would say 5F4. If that's the noble gas configuration for uranium, well, how many valence electrons does uranium have? Uranium metal would have two valence electrons. If that's the noble gas configuration for uranium, what's the full electron configuration for uranium? To get 92 electrons, you would start with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, 6p6, 7s2, 5f4. What if I asked you to do a no, uh, an orbital diagram for uranium? Now, for something this large, I would say that you could show only the orbitals appearing after radon. What would that orbital diagram look like? That orbital diagram would only be composed of 7s and 5f. Now, in your textbook you may notice that these are being generally placed along a single line one reason for that is they're close in energy. The other reason is that as you look from left to right, 
you'll see the ordering that's already there anyway. So 7s would have 2 for uranium, and the 5f would have 4 that are all spread out. If I asked you what the quantum numbers were for this very last electron, what would those be? That very last electron is in the fifth shell, so the n is 5. It's an f orbital, so the l is 3. The m sub l ranges from negative 3 up to positive 3. That electron that's circled happens to be right in the middle with an m sub l of 0, and it's pointing up, so it has spin of plot positive 1 half. What if I asked you to describe this electron in uranium? What are the quantum numbers? It's in the seventh shell in an s orbital, which has only one possible value for m sub l. There is only one s orbital, and it has spin down. Going back up and thinking about the wave function psi and the quantum numbers, when we perform that and we look at the quantum numbers, there are only specific allowed values for those quantum numbers. And when we look at the energies associated with those quantum numbers, that is the reason why these are the only orbitals which exist. in atoms and I'm actually going a little bit higher than I need to in order to be able to show you this whole filling order again So again, 1s fills first, then 2s, then 2p and 3s, then 3p and 4s, then 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, 7p, 8s. 8s would not appear until you were looking at... 8s would not actually appear until you were looking at a z equal to 119, which is past the most recently discovered element with a z of 118. So to get to the 8Ps, or the 7Ds, or the 6Fs, we would have to go even lower on the periodic table than we already have in terms of the elements that we would know. In fact, what orbitals would become available in the fifth shell that we haven't shown here? Now we would start going in alphabetical order. So now if you could go past 8s, if we started to fill in that row in the periodic table below the z of 118 or higher than the z of 118, after 8s we would go to 5g, 6f, 7d, 8p, 9s. Those orbitals still exist, but we will not encounter, to encounter them in ground state electron configurations or ground state orbital diagrams.